I saw a man that was looking at our notice board on the church. And uh, I, I said, can I help you at all? Excuse me, are you all right? Well, not really, no. I've just lost my wallet and my ticket and everything. I've got to get back to my unit in Ireland. And I've got to get up to Manchester. I've got no train ticket. I've got no money. I've got no thing for food. Despite his dishevelled appearance, the man claimed to have a connection to the military in Northern Ireland. I've got to get back to my unit, otherwise I'm going to be on a charge. Oh, you're a military man. And you've got to get from here? From here to Manchester, yes, and then to Ireland. I think we can possibly help you. Come with me. I think I might be able to help you. To get him back to Northern Ireland, the Reverend gave Kurt 40 pounds for a train ticket to Manchester Airport. But it was all part of an elaborate con that was only just beginning. But the phone call was a ruse to make the next stage of Kerr's scam seem more believable. It was to unfold the next morning. As I came to the church, I saw this figure. And immediately I thought, that's the chap I helped yesterday that was supposed to be going to Manchester Airport. Andrew? I knew no money. Someone from the army phoned here last night. He explained to me that he had a history of diabetes and he'd had an attack last night and he hadn't made the train. What are you doing here now? And he'd subsequently had bed and breakfast in the town and he only had 10 pounds left. So it was back to the cash machine for a second time, with the kind-hearted reverend believing he was helping Kerr back to Northern Ireland with another £40 train ticket. But that still wasn't the end of this con. I was at home and I got this phone call. Hello, is that, is that the reverend there? It was the voice he had heard the previous day, this time telling him that Kerr had missed his plane and would need to catch a special military flight the next day. He said, can you please go to the station and pick this Andrew up? And he was waiting at the station. I brought him back home. It was at this point Kerr made his most audacious move, asking the Reverend to lend him £800 for this military flight home. Hello, Jimmy. In the final stage of the scam, Kerr claimed he would ensure a courier would bring the Reverend all the money he was owed. Now listen, can you sort out the courier for me? And provided him with a military security code to further reassure him. I'll just need the security code. But like every other part of this con, it was a complete fabrication. You'll need that, otherwise he won't give you the money. The courier would come and bring me this money and uh, I had to make sure that I was in when the courier came. I waited three days and the courier never came. With one final train ticket paid for, in total, the Reverend gave more than £1,000 to Robert Kerr. But it wasn't long before this con man was targeting unsuspecting Christians in another part of the country. When Kerr met the couple, he asked for a small amount of money. He wanted a train fare but his deception was only just beginning. His train ticket that he had was out of date because he said he'd been in the hospital for too long. And he wanted to go to a cash point to get some money out to get another one. My husband took him up to the bank. When he put his card in, there were no funds available. So he asked if he could borrow some money until the following day. Kerr claimed it was too late to catch his train. And back at their house, the couple lent him more money completely unaware he was drawing them into another of his elaborate cons. Because he said there was no more trains. We gave him all that we had and drove him to a travel lodge. And he wanted something for evening meal and breakfast the next morning. So we gave him 120 pound. Area. They thought this was the end of it. But sadly, there was worse to come. But an hour later, there was a knock on the door. He was extremely distressed. I've had a bit of trouble again. And he needed some more money. As unbelievable as it sounds, Kerr claimed to have left the £160 they'd given him in a taxi, and he was penniless again. So I turned around and said, well, we haven't got any more money. I've only got uh, my credit card. He said, well, if you take me to your ATM, 
get some money out of there. So it was off to the cash machine where Kerr was given £200 and then to a supermarket to use cash back for even more money. And it was during this part of his con that Kerr was caught on CCTV.